I can't even describe how excited I am because behind me right there is an E93 BMW but it's no ordinary E93 BMW it is an M3 and it's a gorgeous car even as the drop top that you see behind me which is heavier it isn't as stiff as the hard top but really given the kind of car that this is the fact that it is a drop top perfectly suits its character I mean this is just a, a big V8 cruiser with decently sharp handling you can of course hoon this car and it grips the road like few cars can but drop the top and you will just enjoy the V8 burbling in the background as the automatic transmission shifts the gears for you so this E93 is a 2008 car it was bought in Switzerland it's got 130,000 kilometers it doesn't really have any major modifications done to it other than let me show you this carbon fiber cold air intake which doesn't really add that much performance if any but it makes the most intoxicating induction noise you will ever see or hear rather in any engine this is my first time looking at an s65 and i'm blown away it's my first time driving one experiencing one so i'm super duper happy i for instance didn't know that this intake is actually fake and only this one feeds air into the engine so just a few points about the engine it is a 4 liter v8 naturally aspirated it has individual throttle bodies and it pumps out 420 horsepower interestingly this engine revs all the way to 8400 rpm and it delivers its peak power of 420 horsepower at 8300 rpm peak torque of 400 newton meters is delivered at 3900 rpm but you really want to rev this out and it sounds amazing it's the most amazing engine I've ever had the chance to drive ever in a car any car any brand anything and I'm so happy that the drive is taking place on my favorite mountain road the car also has adaptive dampers it was raining earlier but I think I'm going to drop the top and yeah E93 M3 it's time to take it for a drive so this car is a hard top as was the E9X series of 3 Series BMWs. The E46 had a soft top in its cabrio configuration. Seat belt on, M mode is enabled, put it into manual mode, and away we go. From the moment you start this car up, it feels special. It burbles like nothing else. Even other BMWs and other V8s they don't sound anything like this in fact I would say that in terms of its exhaust noise this sounds closer to the V10 that BMW put in the M5 and M6 of this same era the engines are indeed related this is more or less the V10 in that car with two cylinders lopped off so it has the same high revving nature One of the most intoxicating sounds you will ever experience in a car the gearbox is a seven speed double clutch it's an early one and you can tell but I understand why some people chose to buy this over the manual even though the manual is more engaging it's because that through the paddles on the steering wheel you can change gear and you can get the gear that you want without having to take your hands off the wheel and in a car with over 400 horsepower that's a wise thing to do In this configuration, the E93 chassis, the M3 hits 100 kilometers per hour in 5.1 seconds with this transmission, with the DCT. If you get one with the manual, that increases to 5.3 seconds. It's also worth noting that it's around 155 kilograms heavier than the, the hardtop coupe model. And that is another few tenths quicker to sprint to 100 kilometers per hour. 
By modern standards, 420 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque isn't that much. If I'm perfectly honest, my 2 liter diesel 3 series has almost as much torque as this. So for instance, I put it in fourth gear and if I floor it, it pulls about as well as my diesel. But this is an engine that you need to enjoy at high revs because as I said, it delivers its peak power just 100 revs below its red line, which is crazy. And it encourages you to rev it out. I would also say that compared to the modern equivalent of this car, this feels slow, but it is nowhere near as intimidating. As and that. I would say it's even more fun. It's definitely more fun. I haven't yet gone through the adaptive damper mode, but I am going to just as soon as we hit the forest here and we exit this village just to see how big a difference they make to the driving experience. Boy, I really like how the car blips the throttle on downshifts. It's so satisfying. It's so brilliant. What a fantastic piece of kit. I really understand why these are so coveted these days. It's such a grippy and confidence inspiring machine. I honestly can't feel the chassis flexing. I watched a few reviews of this car, both new ones and period reviews. And those who got to drive both this and the coupe did confirm that you can feel the difference in stiffness. But really, for me, here on this amazing road, <laughs> I couldn't care less. In fact, I'm happy it's the drop top. I also really, really love the shift lights. They keep you from having to look at the rev counter when you're driving the car hard and you can keep your eyes on the road. I mean, it's much better than just having a screen in front of you and then a part of the screen lighting up. This is actual LED lights that light up as you approach the red line. And it is so satisfying to change properly in this car at high revs. The owner said that he didn't want an aftermarket exhaust for this car because it's too loud. And I would agree with him. This car has the stock exhaust, but the carbon intake, which really transforms the induction noise. And it allows you to hear the individual throttle bodies better than you can in the stock configuration. What a fantastic machine. seem to get a bit hot though I think it's around 120 degrees 115 now so I'm just gonna back off and try to think of more things to say about this car so as an e90 owner myself I noticed some differences for instance this car has the extended leather pack which adds leather all the way up the dash and so you can't have the amazing pop-out cup holders that I have in my car. The steering wheel is exactly the same as the sport one for the regular E90. The only difference is this piece of trim with the buttons and the M button here on the steering wheel. The paddles behind the wheel are also bigger than you would find on a non-M E90 of the same era. You have buttons here on the center console. One is labeled power. This essentially just changes the throttle mapping and it makes the car even more eager. The minute you just touch the accelerator pedal, you're already given 30% throttle. And it's really sharp. It's like an on-off switch. It's brilliant. Behind it, you have the EDC button, which I forgot to press. This stiffens up the dampers. Let's see. Oh yeah, definitely feel it in its stiffer setting. 
and behind it you also have a DSC button which in my car is next to the hazards and the door lock and unlock in between the central vents so the le extended leather pack includes the center console and I presume the doors no not the doors oh yeah and the doors on the E92 and E93 have these pop-out things here which I think are kind of cool oh yeah so you have also have leather here on the door where in my car you just get a cheap crappy vinyl and also on the door handle itself the grab handle for the passenger door do I notice anything else oh yeah the M seats of course the brakes also deserve a mention I think they are standard but I've been hooning this car around for a while and I'm experiencing no fade the only thing I don't like are the rubber mats because my heel keeps slipping around and um, I would like it to be more fixed in place this is such a treat driving this car I mean it's owner Florin he's very into cars and especially considering that he lets peasants like me drive his car I will be eternally grateful to him thank you this is probably one of the best drives if not the best of my entire life the road is fantastic the car is amazing I have limitless headroom and the best engine note in the world I mean come on does it get better than this and I've driven a lot of cars on this road some of them quicker than this considerably quicker I mean I've driven diesels that are quicker than this car but nothing feels like this tail happy as I was expecting it to be it's running the stock 19 inch wheels and the tires are Michelin PS4S's it's really grippy the steering is reasonably communicative although I think it might be better in my diesel E90 I'm not sure why because this is hydraulic and in my car the rack is electric but it, I think it might be ever so slightly pointier than this it might also be the weight difference my car weighs like 1.4 tons and this is nearly this is over 1.8 actually and that might also dull the handling around the corners a little bit but the difference is negligible and the only reason that I can tell is because I've driven my car hard for many years on many roads and uh, I'm able to gauge its handling prowess let's say I really like how this engine picks up from lower RPMs. What a fantastic piece of kit. I think I've said this like four times now in the video, but I'm that excited. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums things up. Thank you for watching this video like it and subscribe to the channel if you like content like this and I'll see you in the next one